be live. All set? Okay. Uh, call the meeting of Traffic and Public Safety Committee to, or, uh, to order on March 28th, 2023. Do I have a roll call, please, Melanie? Yes. Commissioner Dolezal? Yep. Commissioner Owens? Here. Commissioner Dobbs? Here. Commissioner Litke? Here. Commissioner Parson? Here. And Chair Moriarty? Here. Thank you. All right, moving on to community comments. Don't have any sheets. You don't have any, even though we know both in the in the over there. <laughs> Hello, Mike. <laughs> Excellent. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, let's see. I'm sure you had uh, some time to read over February 28th meeting minutes. Do I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. Okay, I have a first. Do I have a second? John, second. Yep. All in favor? What aye? Aye. aye? aye. All right, motion passes. All right, moving on to presentations and reports, transportation system plan update, city staff. Okay, we have with us this evening um, Taylor Campy, our community development director, and Alan Wilson, city planner. And I'm going to hand it over to them to uh, provide the transportation system plan update. And at your last meeting, uh, you had a couple of volunteers who uh, were chosen to be stakeholders at the stakeholder meeting and carry the, the um, opinions and concerns and ideas of the commission forward um, with the stakeholders. So this will bring all of you up to speed and then um, we'll be able to, and anybody's welcome at any of the other meetings also. So um, Taylor and Ellen, I will let you Go ahead. Thanks, Melanie. Um, yeah, hi, committee members. Hi. I think this hi. is the... Hi, Jill, long time no see. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna introduce us real quick before handing it over to Alan. Um, so we are some of the planning staff in the community development department. Um, just for a little context, the planning division manages all of our development services. So that includes permitting, like building permits um, and also land use applications. So we'll process things like um, land use applications include subdivisions, zone changes, conditional uses, lot line adjustment, annexations. Um, so we're dealing with a lot of the growth on the front lines there. And then um, we also do long range planning and legislative land use updates. So legislative updates are like code amendments or um, changes to our comprehensive plan policies. Um, and then long range planning projects are projects that usually are focusing on a specific aspect of the city's um, kind of functions and vitality. So you'll have um, a project might focus on housing or economic development or transportation. And a long range planning project is um, you'll have, basically we work closely with the community and then with technical experts and whatever field it is we're dealing in. And we make a plan, usually looking 20 years into the future um, and planning, how are we gonna meet the community's needs and achieve the community's goals on that topic. So what we're doing tonight, um, we're talking about the transportation system plan. So this is a long range planning project. It's looking at obviously the city's transportation system um, and looking at you know the needs that we have, the goals that we have related to transportation. And at the end of the project, the goal for the project is to um, formally adopt a plan for how the city is going to meet those needs and goals over the next 20 years. Um, this particular project, this TSP update, is being funded almost, uh, for the most part, being funded by um, a grant from the state's Transportation and Growth Management Program, TGM. And we applied for that grant back in 2020 because um, part of what prompted that application was because of all the growth that's been happening um, and just recognizing the importance of 
making sure that our transportation system can accommodate the growth and preserve safety and accessibility. Um, and not just not just preserve it, but um, also, you know, improve safety, you know, fix existing issues and improve accessibility and mobility for anyone who's traveling around or through or from or to Estacada, um, whether it's drivers, walkers, bikers, or just any other way of getting around. You know, we're trying to look um, holistically at the, the whole system for all types of users. So, um, so yeah, we got the grant back in 2020. There's a really long lag between getting that kind of grant and actually starting the project. So um, we did start this project, I think it was roughly spring of last year, um, and it was before your committee actually existed. So um, this meeting is kind of a chance for your group to get caught up on what the project is, what's been going on with the project so far. Um, and our hope is that that will, that will allow you to be um, more able to fully and meaningfully engage with the project as we move on in this next phase of it. Um, and we really just wanna make sure that we get any input that you have about these different proposals that are currently being developed. So um, <clears throat> we, Alan's got a PowerPoint that he's gonna go through. We have uploaded that to um, the meeting page for tonight. So you can go back and revisit these slides if you want. I would also encourage you to um, check out the project web page, which is just the city website URL, cityofestacada.org, and then slash TSP for transportation system plan. Um, it's really easy for us to confuse that with the acronym for this committee. <laughs> um, yeah, love the acronyms. Um, and then lastly, I know Alan's going to reiterate this, but um, we have several project meetings that are coming up that are open to the public. So you would be more than welcome to attend any of those. Um, and I think I'll, I won't list out the dates of those. I think Alan might address them, but um, we'll make sure that, um, that you guys have that information because you are absolutely invited and welcome to um, participate in the upcoming meeting. So I think I'm gonna turn it over to Alan now. He will bring you all up to speed on what's been done so far and looking at next steps. Awesome, thanks Taylor. Good evening committee, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. This will be presenting from my home. Um, but yeah, so just wanted to talk a bit about, um, the city's been working on a transportation system plan update since last summer as Taylor outlined. Um, and in that process, we've been working with and listening to residents, local experts and other community stakeholders to get a better understanding of the current and anticipated transportation issues in Estacada. Um, so since last June, the city's held a number of events, um, including two stakeholder group meetings, um, a city council briefing, three briefings for the DEIC or the um, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee, four one-on-one -on -one stakeholder interviews, um, four interviews specifically with residents uh, who experience mobility and accessib accessibility issues. Um, we also held a youth engagement event, um, which included a survey for the kids over in the old ant farm building on Zobrist, and also a community workshop and open house in October. Um, also last October, um, our transportation consultant team at DKS produced a conditions and gaps memo that basically outlined the state of the existing transportation system in the city and also offered some forecasts on how those conditions might change in the next 20 or so years if no further improvements are made. Um, it will come as no surprise to anyone here that the city is experiencing um, significant growth in population and employment, and especially in residential growth, and especially in the areas north and east of town. Um, many of the rural farming areas on the edge of the city's urban growth boundary are projected to be zoned for single and multifamily housing by 2043. Um, that's going to lead to an increase in commuter travel into town and to put more strain on Estacada streets generally, and will also lead to a larger strain on the transportation system. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll talk a bit about the pedestrian network. Um, 
Our consulting team created an inventory of sidewalks and crosswalks located along all arterials and collectors, which are kind of the, the bigger roads that go through town, and also most of the residential and local streets. Um, they found some deficiencies. There's many areas where no sidewalk exists or the sidewalk is too narrow, like four feet or less um, in width. Um, there are segments in need of repair. Um, those are most often present in the older residential neighborhoods. And many of the um, pedestrian ramps are deficient and in need of reconstruction to ADA standards. But on the bright side, um, we now have full sidewalks along Broadway Street and Main Street between 6th Avenue and the highway and through most of the downtown area. The newer residential neighborhoods have complete or nearly complete sidewalk networks. Um, there's sidewalk and curb ramp improvements being made throughout the city at this, at this time. And there's a pedestrian trail, the Ranger Woods Trail, that starts at Cemetery Road and Hill Way and leads to the high school. So due to the city's small size, it's potentially very bikeable, but the, um, the hilly topography presents some challenges to that. Um, and there's a, yeah, talk about the, the Lakeshore Trail is the only designated shared use path in Estacada that was included in the inventory. Um, there are plans to complete the Casadero Trail, which would um, hopefully attract even more recreational biking trips from the metro area. Um, there are bike lanes on the highway now through downtown. Um, and out, but outside of this, there are only bike shoulders along the highway, and there's little bike infrastructure within the town. So looking at transit, TriMet and SAN, the Sandy Area Metro, I think that's what it stands for. Uh, they provide bus, style of ride, and paratransit services. Um, and due to the residential growth that the city is experiencing. The consultant team identified a need for expanded transit service um, because current transit routes are hard for people living on the east and north sides of town to access. Okay, so the consultants also considered crash data from 2016 mm -hmm. to 2020. Um, they examined several crashes along the highway. Um, there were six that caused injury um, at the bridge intersection, so at, you know, 211 and 224. There have been multiple crashes that resulted in injury along the highway at Wade Street, River Mill Road, and at South 2nd Street. Um, there were 13 crashes along Eagle Creek Road as well. And since this report was published last fall, there have been several more serious crashes along Highway 224, just north of the city. Um, and also ODOT's website lists a number of countermeasures that could be used to address some of those issues, such as curve warming, warning signs and rumble strips. Okay, driving conditions. So field inventories were conducted to determine the characteristics and driving conditions of most of the major roadways in the city. Um, the consultants looked at posted speed limits, roadway lanes, uh, road geometry and lane configurations, as well as intersection controls. And there are also several maps in the in the memo that you could look at if you um, want to access that conditions and gaps memo. Okay, in current traffic conditions, uh, the consultants looked at congestion levels at 13 key intersections around Estacada. And under existing conditions, all of these intersections meet adopted mobility standards. And that is to say that congestion ex experienced at this present time is quote unquote, within accepted levels. And while most intersections experience relatively little congestion today, the intersections at the highway and main street and the intersection before the bridge do experience some congestion and that is expected to increase, of course. So congestion levels at the steady intersections that I mentioned earlier were reevaluated under projected future conditions. And in general, by 2043, a high level of congestion is expected without any improvements um, due to substantial levels of growth that, that we were talking about, not only in the city, but just in the region generally. Um, several of those will likely, several of those intersections will likely fail to meet their mobility standards under future conditions. And again, you can refer to the memo for details on that. Um, as far as free traffic goes, highways to 
211 and 224 are the mo most used freight corridors, as you would expect. And the industrial area in the Northwest will most certainly serve more freight vehicles in the future. Um, Main Street has also been identified as a freight thoroughfare within the city, and that's being talked about in, um, at, at meetings uh, in the TSP update as well. So one of the project goals is to support an equitable, oh wait, am I on the right slide? Yeah, I think I Access and safety issues slide. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Okay. One of the project goals is to support an equitable transportation system that justly allocates the benefits and burdens of transportation projects, policies, plans, and processes. So this goal was used to identify potential gaps related to equitable access to transportation options. And so here are some observations from the memo that point to areas for improvement, um, some of which I've already mentioned. So there are barriers for people with mobility issues, such as hazardous street crossings and curb ramps, inadequate street lighting, sidewalks that are missing or in poor repair, um, Many of the people we talked to have remarked on the short crossing time at the Broadway signal. And there's also um, a lack of handicap parking has been mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. um, a need for safer street crossings was identified. Um, also, it was mentioned that the new subdivisions are being built far from existing transit lines, as I mentioned before. And there's also a lack of dedicated shared use trails and bike lanes. So this list of potential improvements was developed with community and stakeholder group input. Um, so some of those future projects might include more sidewalk construction, infill and repair, upgrading the sidewalk ramps to ADA standards and installing ramps wherever they're missing, um, street crossing treatments that include high visibility crosswalks and enhanced crossings, shared youth paths and trails separated from streets for recreational and daily travel needs. Um, a network of bikeways that connect the residential areas to services and resources in the downtown and commercial areas. Um, and also wayfinding signage being installed will be good too. And there are a few more. Um, a bike share system has been discussed, including electric assist bicycles for hills, safety improvements at locations with higher crash risk, additional street lighting, um, also traffic calming technology, curb extensions, traffic circles, and could be as simple as speed bumps too. Um, upgrading the traffic signals or roundabouts at congested intersections, adding turn lanes at intersections, increasing crosswalk signal timing, improving street connectivity in new development areas, which would reduce trip lengths, distribute the traffic to reduce congestion and also improve emergency response and evacuation capacity. So we have now moved down onto the, to the new phase of the TSP update where we develop solutions to the issues that we have um, identified thus far. And to keep the community engaged and the project moving forward, the city plans to host the following events in the coming months. So there'll be one more DEIC briefing in September, a second city council briefing next month, um, two more stakeholder group meetings, one in April and one in September, a second open house community workshop in mid-May, I think Taylor mentioned that, um, and an online survey starting at the same time as the workshop. And as always, there's more details can be found on TSP-related public events and meetings, past and future, um, that we found here. Taylor also told you about, um, yeah, this uh, this link. So it's just the city's link with forward slash TSP. And um, yeah, please come to the May 15th event if you can. And uh, I think that's all I have. And um, yeah, we'll open it up for questions if anyone on the committee has questions for Taylor or I. Okay, we have one over here, Alex. <clears throat> hey there. Hello. Um, I'm John, by the way. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, John. Good to meet you. Too. So uh, I think our first meeting, uh, TSP had uh, some information out. And uh, so I grabbed this, and it's the current 
SDK's current TSP uh, was written in 2007. Um, and then I read on and it says SDK's population is projected to grow by 75% over the next 20 years. Um, frankly, I think it's grown by that since I moved here in 16. And so my question yeah. or a question is, um, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about projections and I think you said 2043, something or other, but have you got, or how does that compare to the reality on the ground? So if we're thinking 75% growth in 20 years uh, and we've hit it in four or five, you know, what does that do to the, to the plans moving uh, in the near term, frankly? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it's, it's hard to put a solid number on that. And um, we just completed a housing needs analysis in the last couple of years. I think that was, yeah, that the, the date, the official date of that is 2021. And um yeah, Taylor, what, what would you say about forecasting that growth? I mean, yeah, go ahead, Taylor, do you have anything to say? Yeah, it's really hard to, to forecast growth, obviously. Um, the market ultimately is what determines a lot of, the market is, yeah, a, a big factor in um, what kind and speed of growth we're going to have, but um we do expect, because of some other particularities about Estacada's situation, we do expect growth to continue at a, at least a slightly higher rate than what that official housing needs analysis that Alan mentioned, um, you know, projected. So um, if this committee would like, I'd be happy to um, put together a kind of packet of information to send out about that housing needs analysis. They did a population projection. They did a, an alternate population projection to assume higher growth because we've been seeing really high growth rates um, and we do expect that growth to continue. Um, there is some indication because of the, um, the number of building permits that we've gotten so far this year and towards the end of last year, there's like a little bit of indication that maybe the growth is going to slow down. But again, it's really hard to say um, because that might have been a response to the interest rates going up. It's all really impacted by the market. So um, I know that's not really an answer to your question, um, but basically this, the transportation system plan is um, intends to account for all of the growth that that we expect to happen in the next 20 years. So even if growth happens way faster than we expect, um, the TSP should provide, you know, there's, it's unlikely that we're going to grow by the amount we project over 20 years. Um, sooner than like five years from now, right? And five years is roughly a good kind of increment of time that we should be re revisiting our TSP every five, maybe 10 years anyway. So, um, so ideally, if we do a good job of um, developing a TSP, we will we'll be ready for whatever growth does happen, even if it happens way faster than our official population projection says it's going to. If that makes sense. Yeah, I've got like four more. Um, Go for it. So just in reading this, it looks like uh, by say summer, this summer, maybe fall, uh, the city council will be voting on uh, recommend and adopt a draft TSP, but that doesn't actually equal actual construction, right? That's just, this is the guideline, so to speak. Right. Yeah, that's a great, that's a really good question. Um, so it it won't be any sooner than fall, and we'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, and yes, the TSP does not actually, um, adopting the TSP does not come along with actually building anything. It does identify certain projects that will get included in the city's capital improvement plan. So for example, if there is a 
uh, traffic light that's needed at a certain intersection and we've adopted it into our TSP. Um, and then we also, we've prioritized it enough to also include it in our capital improvement plan. That means that the city has, um, has dedicated future funds from SDCs and other funds, funding sources. Um, we are basically promising ourselves, we're gonna spend this money on that project within the next five years, or so. I think it's a five-year plan. Um, so it does result in the actual construction of certain projects that get included in the capital improvement plan. Um, but the little caveat there is that there are a ton of projects that will get included and recommended by this plan. And there's no way that the city is gonna be able to spend, um, to fund all of them. So um, a lot of the, that's kind of where the prioritization questions come in. Um, there are a lot of things we would like to do, but if we only have a certain number of funds available to us over the next five or 10 years, what are the projects that we really wanna prioritize those funds for? Um, and then the other thing that the TSP does is it sets development standards and requirements for private developers. So if we get a subdivision application, for example, um, our department looks over that application, looks at where it is in the city, and if any of the roads that it is next to or that would go through it are identified in the TSP, then they have to build those roads according to the standards that are, um, you know, designated in the TSP. So if it's just a local road, that's going to be a much narrower roadway than, for example, a major collector, which is um, Eagle Creek Road is a designated as a major collector. That road's going to get built out to a 70 foot right of way. It's going to have um, a planting strip and then sidewalks. It's going to have bike lanes and parts of it. So um, the TSP also determines what private developers have to build whenever the private developer comes in with an application. But the city doesn't the city doesn't build subdivisions, right? The developer does. So it right. just, things get built as private development happens too. So another question is I recently read an article that, uh, and I don't know if the city approved it or what, but they're gonna have a river access right there on Lakeshore where people are gonna be able to get down to the river and launch whatever they carry. And I would expect that's gonna have a, a pretty significant um, impact on traffic on Lakeshore. And so that made me think, I'm sure that wasn't part of the TSP, but I also, I don't know where that came from, but what other projects are out there that might have some sort of significant impact on the TSP? You know, we were interested in, in increasing recreation out here. What other things, or do you know about other projects or who developed those other projects so that you can get more information, just like that first question about projection versus reality on the ground. If we've got all of these new river access things that may change, say, public transport or whatever. Did yeah. that make the question make sense? Yeah, it did. Um, and that's a great question too. The, um, the consultants, Part of their analysis is to look at what projects are um, what projects are planned. So yes, they're aware of the Lakeshore um, access project. Um, they're also aware of private developments that have been approved but not yet built. So they're looking at what are these kind of big projects that are going to generate traffic, and they you know do modeling to look at how that traffic's going to interact in certain, you know, different parts of the city and where it's going to, um, you know, trickle out to and access from and stuff like that. Um, so that's part of it. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any other projects that are slated to happen that would maybe generate a lot of traffic, but I'm sure there are private projects that might come in. It sounds um, like you're aware of them, though. Yeah. Oh, there's developments happening, you know, so we're getting yes. um, right now there's a there's a 36 unit apartment building. Uh, I guess it's three buildings being built um, across the street from Campanella Estates. It's only 36 units, but that's going to generate traffic. That's kind of a lot of units for Estacada. Um, 
and yeah, things are, things are getting built, you know, things are coming in. Um, so, and, and the other thing to consider is even if there aren't necessarily project, oh, the, that's what I was thinking, the forest service building, there's a lot of interest in, um, you know, what could be done with the old forest service building. We've had a couple of daycare providers that are interested in opening up like a big, um, child care center there. We've heard from other people who just want to know, you know, what's allowed to happen in that zone. What could I do with it if I bought it or leased it? So um, we get a lot of those calls, you know, people who are just interested in what they could do in a zone, uh, which brings me to what I was going to say um, is that's another thing that this project, uh, the consultants look at is what are the uses that are allowed in the zones throughout the city? One of the reasons that we um, thought it was important also to update our transportation system plan, not just that it's outdated and from 2007, um, but in 2019 or in early 20, the city adopted six new zones. We rezoned a bunch of, I think we had like 400 some acres of surplus industrial land that we rezoned to these different types of um, commercial, five of them were commercial, um, mostly mixed use types of zones. And then one of them was a residential zone. Um, and so we rezoned all this land. And what that means is that whenever the land develops, it's gonna develop with those types of uses that are allowed in the zone. And the types of uses that are allowed in those new zones are um, going to be a little more intensive on the transportation system. And there are going to be just different needs from um, the types of the types of people coming and going from those properties, right? You have very different needs coming and going from a big industrial site than you do from, you know, retail on the ground floor and apartments above. So, so that's another thing that it's looking at is what do we expect the transportation needs around these areas to be based on what the zones allow. So even if we don't know specific projects that are coming in quite yet, we can sort of roughly estimate what what types of issues and needs there might be in those areas. So uh, two more questions. One, um, the equi equitable access. Um, isn't that just ADA or is or is that a something else? Is that a different standard? Um, are you referring to what is it that you're looking at? It's hard it was I was just took notes when when he was talking about um, access safety issues, access and safety issues. And he said oh, okay. equitable access. Mm -hmm. And I and I wondered, I mean, ADA is kind of rules the roost, but is yeah. equitable access. Is that the same thing or is that a different standard? So I'm sure that we have a definition of this in one of the earlier project deliverables. Um, ADA is a is like the, I would say the primary piece of that. Um, and ADA, like those are, ADA is a requirement, right? So um, including that goal as part of the plan is really looking at, okay, what does ADA leave out? What accessibility issues do people have that ADA is not covering. Um, and so, yeah, also I think there's a there's more of a focus on other types of access that aren't just um, physical mobility issues, but considering uh, transportation needs of people who have limited resources, people who can't afford a car and are gonna be walking or biking or taking transit because they can't afford a car or, you know, there's a range, there's a range of different needs that people have because of their different life situations, right? So I think that is looking at what are access issues that ADA doesn't cover? And then also making sure, yeah, that we're meeting ADA requirements, of course. Okay. Uh, my last question is, <clears throat> I heard him say something about bike share and then in bike share also included, uh, I think he said electric bikes to deal with the hills. And so I'd be interested in the results of bike share in uh, local communities, because my understanding is they often end up in the river 
And uh, I just read an article about apartment fires with the electric bikes um, and, and from a safety standpoint and, and here of all places, uh, any kind of additional fire hazard would probably be something we'd want to be real careful with. Yeah, we can look into that for you. Um, and there is, yeah, in the conditions and gap memo, I think that there is, there should be a section in there on, on bike share. Um, but I think, yeah, it would be a good idea for us to look at local case studies and see what cities around us have, um, what their experiences have been. So yeah, I'm going to make a note and I can, I can look into that. Thank you. And I'm one of your volunteers for the next meeting, whenever that is. Oh, great. Yeah. April 20th. Um, yeah. yeah, I can, I can rattle off the specific dates of those upcoming meetings if you guys want to hear them. That's good. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So Monday, April 17th is the first of them. Um, and that Monday, April 17th at 4 p.m., the project consultants will give a briefing to the DEI committee. It is open to the public, but it's, um, you know, geared towards the DEIC. So um, there wouldn't be back and forth between public attendees and them, but they do have a public comment section on their agenda if you wanted to um, talk about any of it there. And then on Thursday, April 20th, so the same week at three to 5 p.m., is the next project stakeholder group meeting that will also be led by the project consultants. Um, on, then on Monday, the following Monday, April 24th, three meetings right in a row, um, Monday, April 24th, and I think we're doing 6 p.m., the city council will have their next briefing. That will not be led by the project consultants, just staff. And then in May, on Monday, May 15th, and I think we're starting at 5.30 p.m. Um, we're going to have the second community open house. So that one, we especially hope that you all will attend. It'll have a, um, an online survey component that will open that same day, and it'll stay open for a couple of weeks. So if you can't attend the open house, then by all means, take the or, you know, attend the open house and then also take the survey, um, whatever works for you. But that's that's where we're really focusing on gathering public community feedback about the different recommendations that are being included in the plan. So, yep. Right. Y'all have so, some good questions. Were there any other questions or, we would also take comments and input at this point. I just had a quick question. Um, this might sound weird, but, is it standard to do 20 years for this kind of thing? And that is that why we're doing 20 years? Or is there like, I'm just confused as to why it's a 20 year plan. And I'm guessing that's just the standard all around or something because of it how is. things change so fast. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's kind of, yeah, you're right to notice that it's kind of odd that it is the standard. Long range plans are generally looking at a 20 year planning horizon. Um, if you're doing a visioning plan, sometimes those will be 30 or 40 year planning horizons, but for a regular old long range plan to update your comprehensive plan, that's supposed to be a 20 year projection. But then at the same time, the state recommends and for certain jurisdictions requires, um, recommends that you update those plans every five to eight years, right? So we're supposed to be planning for 20 years in the future, but they also want us to go back five or eight years from now and make sure that we're updating our 20 year plans. <laughs> okay. Um, I just had one more, um, I guess, comment or question. Um, is there a plan in the future to involve our, com our committee specifically more on this since we're traffic and public safety, or are we just kind of like part of the public input or is there like a plan maybe in the future that our committee would be a little bit bigger part just because of what we're supposed to be here for? I just don't know if that's maybe thought about if you guys have thought about that um because that's like in our name so yeah that's i think that's why we wanted to make sure that you provide we provided a couple of members to be on the stakeholder committee okay um and so i don't know if there's you know we're we're halfway through are we about halfway through taylor um yep yeah and so we do want we want you all to 
have your eyes and ears on this um, and you know attend all the, the as many of the meetings as as Taylor mentioned, um, especially the the public meetings, the workshops and such. I was just curious because I know we're a new committee and mm -hmm. um, so everything kind of started before us, but now that we're here, um, I see there's a meeting specifically for DEIC. So I just wondered if in the future you were thinking about maybe doing the same for this committee since that's what we're focused on. It just would make sense to me. But um, I think that's kind of what that's kind of what this meeting is is right, Taylor, or is that different? Yeah, it is. Um, it's a little tricky. What we could definitely like we staff can do whatever we want <laughs> in terms of the project scope um but in terms of what we uh what we can have the consultants do we're really bound to what the project scope included at the start of the project okay. so you'll notice that the dei the dei committee involvement was included in the scope from the start of the project. And so that's why both they and the stakeholder group have um, briefings and regular meetings with the project consultants. Since the um, TPSC was not included in that scope, we can still do briefings with you guys, but it'll have to be just staff since we're just we're like not allowed to spend more project money towards extra meetings with the consultants. Um, but yeah, I would love to have another meeting with this group if possible. It could be a joint meeting um, with, you know, we could find out if the council wanted to do a joint meeting on April 24th instead of just the briefing with them. Would they want to do a joint meeting um, with this group in order to work through all of that content together? Or, you know, we could, if that doesn't work, we'll, we can figure something else out. But um, yeah, I would love to make sure that this group remains involved and informed enough to, um, you know, really give meaningful input on the content. And it is kind of a lot of content. So, um, so yes, I would hope to have another meeting with you all if possible. Thank you. Carrie. Hi, Carrie here. A uh, question for you. In in your statements, we're representing the public. Let's say guardrails. We have some roads that have uh, very dangerous during ice storms. Uh, things to keep cars and trucks from going into somebody's property. Uh, on this plan of the big scope picture for 20 years, I'm sure there's something road changes, uh, maybe just things that change over a 20 year period. Uh, I'm kind of thinking we're get, hearing the voice, we're the ear for the public to rectify things for safety. So when it comes to issues uh, that we would bring up through the public, uh, I'm sure you guys would agree with these things because they're public safety. Um, if there was something changed like on the big scope of the picture, uh, safety is real important. Roads, traffic, stoplights, everything, school area. So I think what we're kind of, what part of the things that the on ground thing we're doing is we're hearing from the public. For example, uh, we've got some things out here where there's a sidewalk that doesn't have an ADA wheelchair access right here in this building, right in front of it. So priority things I believe will come forth uh, from our group, we're going to bring things that answer the public. Um, I don't know if that would even touch on the future 20 year project or what, but it would be inclusive, I would imagine, right? Fixing things in wanna, the city. Do you want to speak to that, Taylor, or you want me to? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Well, um, yeah, 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 go, go ahead, ahead Melanie. All right, I'll, I'll speak quick and then I'll let you wrap it up. Um, so I think the kind of things that you're talking about are not necessarily things that would be in the transportation system plan. Those might be in the standards for what the road, like if we say a road needs to go um, through a certain area, um, but it's not built now, it's built 10 years from now. When it's built, the standards for that road would be implemented as far as safety um, 
correct safety I, things right yeah. and so like so all of the safety things that i think you're maybe referencing or hearing from the public wouldn't necessarily be incorporated into this plan as this is talking more about routes and but i don't know what do you think taylor am i misreading that growth. yeah it's hard it is so it's really hard to say because some of the safety issues that we've heard about in this process related to like um you know, the speeds that people are traveling on a certain road and then when they come up to the intersection, it's there's limited visibility and, um, you know, some of that input is really helpful for us to hear because there's a certain type of project that maybe could be planned for in the TSP. Um, some of those issues are urgent enough that we would want to do something about it in the short term, though. Um, so. I don't know. I'm sort of inclined to say we would like to hear it all, um, but then you know some of that input will be able to say, oh, this, we won't be able to do anything about this in the TSP, but we can pass this along to Public Works, for example, and they'll fix that issue, or um, it'll bump it to the top of maybe our current capital improvement project list, something like that. I don't know if that's Melanie. You can correct me if that's wrong, but no, that sounds um, that sounds great. Yeah. I wouldn't want you to feel like you shouldn't share input with us just because you're not sure if it would get included in the TSP. We we certainly want to be aware of any and all safety issues that are happening in the city. Okay, cool. Thank you. Just input there. Okay, Casey. Uh, hi, this is Casey Owens, Taylor and Alan. I appreciate you guys taking some time out to come in and spend this evening with us and give us a bunch of information. Um, I've got couple of questions on two different topics. One uh, is going to deal with the fire department. We were talking about um, some of the projects that are going in. Have Has the fire department uh, expressed to you guys that they're having issues getting to any calls located in the city of Estacada currently with the new subdivisions coming in with the old ones? Um, are there any streets that are narrow for them that they have really just said, you know, hey, these are problems and we need to address them? Um, the only thing that's coming to mind that was one of the primary comments from our fire marshal uh, was the difficulty that they sometimes have getting out onto the highway. Um, and I think it's when they're trying to turn left onto 224 out of, do they come out current or Main Street? Uh, current, yeah. 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 Current. Um, that was, yeah. That that was, that was the one big issue. Mm -hmm. What was that, Alan? Oh, just that in the bridge. They were talking about how certain times of the day that the traffic, the congestion just at that bridge intersection is really difficult. It makes responding to calls in the in the south area pretty difficult. But yeah, I, I haven't heard of any difficulty. They haven't expressed, I haven't heard any, them express anything about narrow streets in the residential neighborhoods. Okay. Okay. And then my next question was going to be dealing with the TriMet and the SAM uh, busing systems out here. And you may or may not have the answers to this, but I was just curious, have, have they come in and told you on average how many passengers use their service in Estacado on a daily basis? Did, did they provide that information? I don't know. I don't think that we got that information, but that would be really interesting to know. Melanie, do you recall finding that out at all from Andy or no I I don't know what those numbers are and I don't I don't know if those have been provided and I forgot or if I just I don't remember having that discussion on the ridership numbers I was just curious you know uh, I'm pretty new to the city so I'm just trying to get a grasp of how much need I'm not saying that they should go away but I just want to know what what the need is why and why we have I understand one service goes to Sandy and the other one towards Portland area and different stuff, so I don't, I don't have a problem with two bus services, but how much are they actually being utilized out here? Um, I do know that there's times that I've passed certain stops and there's somebody waiting, so I know there's a need, I get that, but I'd just like to know, you know, that's one question. So if you if you don't know that one, you probably are gonna know the answers to these mm -hmm. next couple that I have, because they're all, they're all related to that. Um, but I was wondering how many stops in the city of Estacasia each bus line has. Uh, I've seen some of the bus stop signs, but I don't know, I don't know where they all are. Um, I was just curious how many different stops are they going to be adding new stops because you mentioned how the 
new housing additions are not, uh, it's not convenient for them to get to the current stop. So does that mean they're going to be adding more with the new subdivisions uh, to accommodate those people? No, there are, um, I mean, I, I shouldn't say never. I suppose it's possible that TriMet could decide to create a new loop in their route or something like that, but um, I highly doubt it, uh, but I don't know. Um, but no, there are no plans in the work in the works for TriMet to add any more stops or either of them to add any more stops. Um, but if there were, it would be, as far as we're aware, it would be on the same line that they currently operate on. Um, the only requirement that we have when a developer comes in with a subdivision that's along a transit line is just that if there's already a bus stop that exists there, they have to basically they have to put in a little bit of extra sidewalk for like a concrete pad at that um, transit stop. But we don't require them to put in new bus stops. Okay. And the last one is also pertaining to that. What what is the time frame that those bus services run here in the city? What's the first time that they show up to pick passengers and what time, what's the latest that they're here when they're leaving? I was just kind of curious about that. Yeah, this is off the top of my head. I feel like it's sometime around seven. Maybe it's later. Melanie, do you know? I am not sure. I'm not usually that. at City Hall that early. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, you're I right think about that. that. They used to have a really early route. It was like five o'clock in the morning and it went straight to downtown Portland um, for the commuters. But I don't know if, if TriMet comes in that early anymore. I think it's mainly between like 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't yeah. know if, if TriMet comes out on Sunday at all. They used to not come out on Sunday, which was a problem because if folks were working Saturday too late, then yeah. they couldn't get back on Sunday. It was, that was, but they might have, um, change that. I'm not sure. I can't remember if I've seen the bus route. I, I could try to look that up. I just looked it up and it is approximately seven o'clock in the morning and it runs until about eight, eight thirty at night. Mm -hmm. Good job, uh, Melanie. All right. Big guess. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I haven't answered any other question or part of the other question. I, I went into our map program and counted the number of bus stops from mm -hmm. Deuce Road South. Like, so the loop from Deuce Road down to City Hall and back, I'm counting 24 stops. And that's just on TriMet. I don't know the number of SAM stops. Wow. And so is that like 24? And some of those are in pairs on? Exactly. On so it's kind of wow. like 12 stops, but each of them go. Exactly. Yeah. So just, yeah, that, that loop on both sides, counting both sides of the street is 24. Good number of stops. I think it's I think it's definitely a subsidized um, service. I don't think that I know there's I'm sure there's not enough ridership to pay for it, um, but there is definitely it definitely gets used by people who need it, both the SAM and the TriMet. So, anyone else have any questions? Or... So, and... Okay, I've got a, a final comment, and it's under the category of. Uh, something to consider. Um, and it's building off of what Brandy and Carrie were talking about in a way. And that is in this TSP process and schedule, you've got four, um, not well, groups or whatever you want to call it, the, the stakeholder DEI community workshops and city council. And all of those are, are you know, going to have their their goals and their their expectations, what have you. So stakeholder you know, speaks for itself, DEI, you know, they have their mission and their objectives. Um, and then the community workshops, city council, uh, they all have, they're all coming from a particular place and wanting particular things. I think in this meeting here, we've come up with some stuff from a strategic standpoint that while, you know, what Carrie was talking about are things the here and now, because there's a forum for the public to, to come to us and bring this stuff up. I think it is our mission to develop strategic traffic and public safety um, uh, recommendations because we're an advisory body. Um, and so it seems like it would be uh, very logical to include us uh, in, this, in this process. Do you, want, do you want to summarize 
the like the um, recommendations you have right now that they could capture, or do you want to like think about that and we can do that at your next meeting? Well, or I'm, I'm going to be there on I think April twentieth. Uh -huh. um, so. so you can definitely weigh in. Oh yeah, yeah, on that. Perfect. That's, okay. that's intent. Yeah. Okay. Randy. I just have a quick comment. Um, I agree with that 100%. But what I wanted to comment on was um, when you were talking about the fire department, we are really blessed in this town to have an incredible fire department that is local and just does everything they possibly can for us. Um, I would encourage you guys while you're speaking to the fire department to not just speak to the marshal, but also speak to the drivers, the actual drivers on the ground, because they might have a completely different perspective um, I know when we were doing our Main Street mock-up and talking to them, speaking to the drivers gives you a ton of information about what they're actually going through on the road and on the in traffic and driving through our town. Um, I would just encourage you guys to definitely include them in that conversation because I think you'll learn a lot on um, what the fire department is going through in our town if you speak to the actual drivers that are on the road. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. That's a great Go ahead, point. Taylor. Sorry. Oh, I was just agreeing. Good suggestion. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I just have a few things. Uh, let's see. It was under uh, Alan's presentation on access and safety issues under potential solutions. Um, just a recommendation. <laughs> I didn't see pedestrian lighting there under that. Would that be something that you would add to that? on crosswalk treatments and pedestrian yeah. lighting do you mean overhead lighting or some kind of like like a like a well overhead treatment? like at uh just over towards the high school we're trying to work with estigate high school uh, in regards to the crosswalk there to make it as big as the football stadium so when everybody okay. parks their vehicles there at the football games that we don't have any accidents or anything like that so overhead lighting, I guess, would be um, blinking light or overhead lightings or solar. Okay. Yeah, I think that that falls under the category of like enhanced, um, yeah, enhanced lighting. There's a name for it that I'm not. Okay. I just didn't see it on there. So I just wanted to just recommend that. That's all. Okay. And Thanks. the second thing I had also was uh, in regards to the TSP. Since this is going to be 20 years out, I don't know if there's anything in there or the um, the project people that are doing this. Does it have to be somewhere that there's 25 mile an hour speed limit signs in neighborhoods? Because there are not in a lot of neighborhoods in Estacada. And I would like that written in there for a safety. Yeah. I know we all went and did the same DMV driver's license exam. We all know about it, but it's not in every neighborhood. Yeah. I just wanted to bring that up. I didn't know whether it fits in there or doesn't, but moving forward, I'm assuming the new neighborhoods, it's a slam dunk, but we do have a lot of older neighborhoods here in Estacada, you know, based on funding, whether they got put in when they can or how many they can buy each year. I understand that. But I just like to see that in writing somewhere, whether John and Brandy take it to the stakeholder group and mention it there. I just wanted to mention it to you guys now. That's all. Yeah, that's a good comment. I, I would think that that's something that the city could just do and not. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe Melanie's. <laughs> Like stop talking to her. Um, but yeah, if we, I mean, if we have the ability to go in and put speed limit signs in some of the older neighborhoods where they don't, where they weren't put in, um, in the past, then we wouldn't need to put it in the TSP. If it's something that we can put in the TSP, um, and get done as a city project rather than obviously you're not going to, you're not usually going to have a developer come in and, you know, redevelop, um, a whole neighborhood. So, um, so if there's some way we could have that be one of the city projects identified in the TSP or, or listed in there as, you know, a goal or a policy, you know, 
sort of a programmatic thing that the city decides we're going to work on and chip away at as we have the ability to every year, you know, put in a sign here, a sign there, whatever the budget allows, um, then absolutely worth including it. Okay, great. Thank you. And I promise this is the last question that I have. It's in regards to the survey that you're going to put out. What questions are you going to ask on that survey? We don't know yet. We don't have okay. um, a draft. So the Just way it'll work. Yep. Yeah. But if you have, um, so what I do know is that in this sort of second phase of the project, we're at the point where we have this, basically this long list of potential solutions, recommended projects and road treatments and um, recommended development requirements for subdiv subdividers or whatever. Um, and so that long list of recommendations, we're gonna have to figure out a way to get feedback from the public about those recommendations. So I'm sure it will be some type of summary of all of those projects and recommendations that then we're asking people to respond to and tell us what they think is a good idea. And so especially for projects that we're not really sure are whether it's a, a good idea to do this or we're not really sure whether this is something that the community and the council are gonna want, we'll definitely be asking for feedback on those. Um, but then also just in general, obviously we want to hear feedback on anything that's included in those recommendations. So I am not sure yet. It seems really daunting, frankly, <laughs> to put together a survey, gathering feedback about this really huge list of potential solutions, but um, they, that's why they are, they're the experts in community engagement. So they'll put something together, but um, you will have a chance to, I'll make sure that you guys get um, a draft of it. Those, there are two documents. There's a list of regulatory solutions, which are um, potential code amendments that we could make to like the development standard requirements related to transportation. And then there's also a list of um, project options. So those would be like city projects, you know, traffic signals or roundabouts or crosswalks here or whatever. Um, and so I'll make sure that you guys get those so that um, if there is anything in there that you want to make sure we're asking about at that um, community open house or in the survey, we can get your feedback about that to the project consultants. Excellent. Thank you. And again, Alan and uh, Taylor, we appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you. Really good Thanks. questions and comments. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Moving on to committee business applications for open position on committee. All right. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure they're getting that set back in play. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so do you have an open position, Katie? Berzinski wasn't able to continue on the committee, unfortunately. And so we have one open position and we have two applicants. Um, Heath Segerberg, how do, you, how do you say your last name? Sedgeberg, Heath Sedgeberg. And then we also had Kylie Watson who applied. Heath is here this evening if you have any questions for him. Um, but he also, I also included their applications in the packet. I'm sure they're both great applicants, but we only have one position open right now. Um, and then from time to time, you know, other positions would come open. Probably, okay, do you so. want to just, you can come up and introduce sure. himself or? Yeah, you, maybe you want to just say a few words about um, why you're interested in the committee and um, just, inter yeah, just to introduce yourself. I'll turn the mic on. No pressure at all, Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I see the red light here. Am I going to get timed out? No. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, my name is Heath Sedgeberg. Um, my family and I have been in Estacada since 2011, off Regan Hill. So we've been here for a long time. No plans on going anywhere anytime soon, unless I get some magical job offer I'm not expecting. 
but worked for Home Depot for 23 years. Again, been in this community. My mother-in-law's lived in up the top of the hill there in Casadero for 20 plus years. So we've got some stakeholding in the in the community. So I'm looking to branch out and help out in the community where I can volunteer. Recently took over as the Cub Master for the pack here in Estacada with Jim's help there. I didn't even know he was the chair for this committee after I applied. <laughs> so not that that should sway the voting, but looking to get more involved in the community. I know just going through the whole Cub Master thing and what my wife was going through trying to get Cub going, Cub Pack going, sorry. Uh, there's just a lack of volunteers. So figuring I can help out with that, but there's other things that could be, I could be useful for as well. So I saw this one pop up. Thought it'd be a good one to get involved with. Excellent, glad you'd be here. Question, Brandy? Yeah, sure. Um, are you available to come to the meetings uh, the fourth Tuesday of every month? Yep, it's offset awesome. from the weeks that we do Cub Scouts, so it's perfect time. Cool. Easy. And most of us, I, I believe almost all of us are, have volunteered to be on a subcommittee of this committee. So are you able to, and it's only another night, of course, but are you able to do more than, you know, one other subcommittee if one pops up and be available sure. for that as well? Yeah. Schedule allowing. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Anyone else? Carrie? Can you read a tape measure? <laughs> oh yeah sure so. just a, just kidding at home depot uh, you'd have to. <laughs> Good question. all right anyone else you've read his uh yeah. qualifications there and he's here and what uh what do we want to do Melanie? yeah if you would like to um i'm i'm just double checking to see if um Oh, is she on? Kylie was on, but she is not. So, okay. Um, if you just want to make a recommendation for to recommend he to be, um, okay, I'm going to defer to my vice chair because okay. I've had ex parte communication. <laughs> the topic came up when we were discussing Cub Scouts, so I want to okay Stay step back it. from that. Yeah. Do you need just a consensus or do you need a vote? I mean, just a consensus is fine if um, to recommend Heath to the city council. That would be fine if everybody's comfortable with that. Does everybody yeah. agree that since he's here and able to be here, that's probably the one we should yes. recommend? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You got it. All right. Awesome. So then at the next council meeting, which I believe is April 10th. Mm -hmm. Um, 10. Yes, okay. then he would, um, that the council will appoint and I'll make sure that they get your recommendation. Um, awesome. It's not absolutely necessary for an applicant to show up, um, but it's, it's, it is nice because then we can meet you and, um, you know, ask you questions and confirm that this is a good time for a meeting and all that. So, yeah, sounds good. Okay. So, consensus to recommend he uh, for the position, the open position. Awesome. Excellent. Perfect. We didn't have to talk about you too much, right? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Excellent. Thank you. All I right. appreciate you volunteering. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, moving on. Uh, National Night Out. Uh, spoken with Mel Melanie a few times about this. Uh, I just wanted to get everyone's uh, input on um, signing up for it. Um, I can go online and register for it. And all the mail and publications will come here to City Hall. Yeah. Um, let's do it. Location. I guess we have two that are, you know, I'm thinking it's August, what is it? First, August first, first Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it going to be hot over here or is it going to be hot over there by the Which, library? Yeah, whichever, whichever you have a preference for. Um, do you do you remember how many people attended last year by any chance? Mm -hmm. I don't think I asked you that. Oh, I it, I, it wasn't very big from what okay. I remember. Um, but I do think that uh, if, if in my personal opinion, I would I think it'd be really smart to do it right across the street from the fire department instead of at the library. I just think it'd be a really smart choice. Of they location. could maybe partner with you. Yeah. Yeah. And open up the station. And they don't have to go anywhere. Right. Right. OK. I think that would just be a smarter. OK. 
location because I think it would be like they like she said maybe they can partner with us help us and okay. um, I know National Night Out is geared towards police but also first responders so it'd be nice to have their help and you know maybe the kids can get on the fire trucks and make it a bigger thing you know what does everyone else think as long as somebody brings a grill I don't care where we have it I, I think we can we can handle that that's right <laughs> I think we put that in the the budget right yeah um let's see what do you think Mitch I think it's good, good. good. Like over there okay. um, would we have to reserve the spot over there or you yes, do that with you I or? will. I'm going to email you the um, what's it called? facilities use request. Okay. To fill that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just making myself a note here. That's I'll fine. Email that to you. We can get that filled out. Okay. It's super hot and um, people could even come across the street here and be in the shade well, at City we can, Hall. And, um, we can have some pop-ups. You know, we can forward. try to yeah. get yeah, some pop-ups. Yeah, we can bring some pop-ups yeah. and mm -hmm. make sure we have like coolers of water mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. like that. Water. We can do, yeah. definitely handle that. Yeah. You guys should get a dunk tape. You know, That's I might right. know a nonprofit that has one that might be able to loan it out. <laughs> 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 it's not a dunk tank, but it's a you sit under it and it dumps on you. Oh, that's so that would be kind of cool. Fun. It's less safety risk too. So and the pools for the little kids. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be really cool. That work. It is excellent. All right, that one's solved. All right, number three: uh, traffic and safety or control device request form. Uh, I don't know if anyone looked at this. I just went by a little bit. You know, talking to Melanie and. Happy Valley and I think Sandy and Happy Valley seems to seem to be the one that had everything, the date, who the person is, where they have an issue, what type of request they have, the location, the reason for the request, a uh, spot for a map or a diagram, and then how they would go about page number two for the request and the traffic control device. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anyone's okay with doing that. I mean, I, I, we don't have to I think we're going to talk about the Facebook page and the website a little bit down, but if we vote, do we have to vote on this or is this not a consensus yeah, why don't you just type make, thing? Yeah, make a motion to accept that um, that form as your okay. a request form and then... I just need some help on the bottom there because I'm horrible at the this type of computer stuff oh, about sure. the page. Oh, sure. Yeah. At the I bottom. Can, I'll take a look at it and... Appreciate it. Like, Tidy it up a little bit. And I then, appreciate that. Um, yeah, and then we could get it posted on on your web, the web page for the committee. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion to accept the traffic safety control device request. You got a first. Okay. I need a second. Second. Randy, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Motion passes. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Melanie. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Number four, Estacada School District. Uh, like we um, spoke with uh, Taylor about the lights and uh, Don, the last meeting, we want to try to work with the school district on the crosswalks mm -hmm. at all the schools, uh, Clackamas River Elementary and uh, River Mill Junior High and the high school because uh, kids are out constantly all the time. And we just want to make sure that bring that up. Go ahead, Casey. Well, you know, I hate to keep beating a dead horse here, but in light of what just happened in Nashville mm -hmm. at that elementary school, it just reiterates to me how much I would really like us to have more uh, officers in these schools. Uh, we we ha I understand that the, the potential of, of a fight occurring is probably going to happen in your high school with older kids. I get that. And that's probably where the officer is, the SRO is stationed 90% of the time. But these other three are soft targets, and I, it just every time you turn on news, and again and again and again, and I just think the safety of our kids deserves more than one officer. And I, I've heard what Lieutenant Mendoza said. I've heard what the superintendent said. It sounds like everybody wants that. How are we going to make that happen? I think it's it is a, it, from what I'm gathering. Is it just breaking down to the funding? 
Is that where we're getting stuck? Because everybody wants it. Well, it would have to be, I think, um, I think if something like that would happen, we'd have to double or triple the size of our tiny police department, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm going to go out on a limb, it would probably be over $3 million, but we're only paying 900000 So, yeah, I, you know, I don't, just I know they don't give grants for uh, public safety. That would be fantastic. But, yeah. There might be other alternatives versus a full SRO. And so I think it's something that maybe should be brought up to the school board because they're the ones that would be making the decisions on what, what is happening in the school district um, and what they're prioritizing and how they are, um, you know, how they're operating. And so I think it would be um, definitely something that this committee could support, but you might want to take that concern um, as a committee, or if not as a committee, if you just want to go individually, you could do it either way and just share your concern with the school board or write a letter. Um, I think there's some opportunities there. Okay. Done. Brandy. Oh, Brandy, I'm sorry. Sure. Was I? Okay. Um, just real quick, um, Superintendent Carpenter was here last time. He was really, really enthusiastic about having an office in each school um, for the officers maybe working towards mm -hmm. getting that done as soon as possible um, to have their faith there can be like a go-between. And then maybe we can go to the school district, the school board and say, hey, we're concerned about this um, as a trap, as a safety issue. Um, and obviously we need to go through them to get this done. So maybe, um, I don't know how to start with the office thing, but Superintendent Carpenter said they could do that right away. He I was thought really he said that they were limited on office space. I thought he said they're, well, they're already having issues he trying said, to fill what they have. He said he's all about it, but then he said he was limited. So I wonder yeah. how we can get him to. I think his heart's there, but the yeah. ability's not, you know, to get it done. I wonder if we can so. find a way to just, um, you know, go to the school board and say, hey, Superintendent Carpenter was really on board with this. Maybe you guys can help make this happen immediately because I think the presence is so important. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, just... And then in the meantime, talk to them about how concerned we are about our kids. And, you know, I know that he's a champion for um, um, concealed carry, as he said, mm -hmm. but we also, I mean, the the visual of officers being there is a deterrent right mm -hmm. so i mean you got I one officer think... from what i understand covering four schools with yeah. a total of two thousand. it's a kids. lot right and again the, the biggest problem i would agree is if, if a fight is going to break out not 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 a mass shooting like we have i'm talking about just the mundane the drugs the fighting that's probably going to be in the high school level mm -hmm. i get that so i understand why they need to be there but then just exactly what happened in nashville where are you going to go where you're not going to be have it have you know, have to confront something. That's right. And so that just puts these two elementary schools and our junior high at such a disadvantage because then if you you tell him you want him at 25% of the time at each school, that's still too thin. He cannot do that. As I mean, Not that they're spread out miles. It's only a mile between the four schools, but you just, you need a presence in all of them. And should we work on like the next meeting, be there and talk to them? Maybe. Can we present to them? Is there a way to do that? Would would it be a good idea to perhaps get him the information that he needs? So say three out of the four schools, excluding the high school, have the rooms. Would it be giving it to him that he could find something in the high school that yeah. would be amenable? You know what I mean? Other than, well, actually, we don't need to. Because the SRO has his own office. Yeah, he does. So if there was some type of compromise working with the, the school district. Because I know it's their call, right? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a letter or something like that. Uh, um, I think we have his support, the superintendent. Yeah. It's just a matter of whether it be to his kind of logistics. Right. Saying we're there to support them. Yeah, I think that would be, uh, yeah, whether you would write, you mean write a letter to Superintendent Carpenter or to the school board? Just, I'm not well, sure. I think FaceTime is important. Yeah. Maybe a couple of us go to the actual school board meeting and state it on the record for them because I think that's going to get further than a letter will any day. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Everybody, yes? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, if everybody's in consensus, then you okay. can, a couple of you can, you could, you could all go, or that might seem overwhelming, like, 
um, <laughs> to have everybody we'll show spread up. out. We'll, um, spend, we'll, we'll have bring the up front. We'll just be the back up. Yeah, or you can, you know, but to have one person speak on behalf of the um, the committee, I think would be very reasonable to to share your concerns and the the. Um, Sounds like a good job for Heath. Yeah. <laughs> or Casey. Or <laughs> Mr. Owens. <laughs> yeah. Or Casey. Good we'll job. Bring it up every meeting, maybe. maybe. <laughs> so um, three things. One, an addendum to what Casey said is the Nashville shooter specifically picked the secondary target where he went because the primary target had, quote, too much security. Mm -hmm. And so it ties in with exactly what, what Casey was saying. Um, secondly, um, I went to go check out the Ranger Wood because I've never been there before. And it says uh, private property, blah, blah, blah. And there was snow anyway, so I didn't go walking on it. But uh, um, is that private property? You know what? I I went to the corner where that orchid health place is, and and went to that corner in the parking lot. And can I do that, or is it is it um, private property on weekends? And I just didn't know, so I was I'm just not sure just where the the private property sign was. That on the gate where you were walking into the trail, or going, going into the trail. trail? It was right there. There's a there's a gap in the gate. A a a. a, a purposeful gap in the gate mm -hmm. and there's a sign right there it says private property blah 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 and and heading out towards mm -hmm. the ranger wood so i wasn't going to walk mm -hmm. out there anyways because it was it was that super snowy day but mm -hmm. i just didn't know if if it was private property or, or well, what so it's just a general I question i didn't think it was private well, i thought it was yeah so it's school property school so they might property. say you know no access during school hours or school property they have some signs that say uh, closed dusk to dawn um yeah, things like that, that but, but there was I don't check. yeah I don't know okay. nobody Secret else considers it as private property exactly. yeah, I've never think it out thoroughfare yeah. um last thing and it's a quickie is is uh you know I heard them talking about the ranger building ranger building mm -hmm. you know is there a way that the school district might be able to use that building for something because I remember as you did he was he had, didn't have space yeah. Right. So is that a, a already built with lots of room space? Yeah. Just asking. Um, not looking for answers on that one, but yeah, that's a good question. Hmm. That's good. Okay. Ranger. Ranger. <laughs> so we can uh, what move forward and talking to the school board. Yeah, do you uh, know when they're they're when they they meet, it would be good to know because then we can plan for it. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. And do they have like public comment like we do? Mm -hmm. They do. Okay. So we don't necessarily have to get on the agenda. We just need to show up. Right. Um, I think it says. Let me see. They have instructions. You have to you have to sign up April twelfth. Where are we at? We're at the end of March. So April twelfth, seven to nine, at the high school, room thirty five. Um, I thought it said how to. Probably you probably just show up and sign up at the time. What was um, the time, Melanie? It's at 7 p.m. on April 12th. In what room or what did you say? It's at the high school 35. room 35. So you enter on the side by the tennis courts by the Ranger Woods. You enter over there. Um, and I'm assuming the three minute limit, Melanie, also? It typically is, okay. yes. Gosh, I don't, they have, a new, so. they have a new website. And so I'm over That's okay. Lost. Um, I think you do have to sign up, but probably just when you get there. Okay. I can double check on that. That sounds good. Excellent. All right. All right. Moving on to number five, traffic and public safety Facebook page. Anyone want to dive in on that one? We have the page now, right? Yes, we do. So we need to what figure out um how we're going to post to it the contributor main contributor oh yeah who our main person is going to be who wants to be the main really care what's that <laughs> what did you just say i'm sorry <laughs> we need to figure out who's going to be our main person to like send just 
yeah, stuff right. to Facebook, Carrie. What we want to post on Facebook. Uh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> You're not even on Facebook. So. I'm not. I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, I I can be. What do we just have to email the staff and tell them what we want on there? Well, that's what do yep. we need? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want to appoint somebody who is, you know, is willing and able to do it, um, you can just email me the text of what you want. If you want an image, sometimes like the arts commission, they're pretty savvy at it. They'll send these cool little images, but you don't have to, you don't have to do that. You just send a photo or um, just whatever you want on there. And then um, Lieutenant Mendoza and I had talked about starting kind of a, um, a bit of a campaign introducing the deputies a little bit more oh, that um, be trying to come That's up. Awesome. So That'd if we good. do that, is it okay to share that on Absolutely. your page also? 100%. And on that, speaking to Brandy before, um, is there something we can help Clackamas sheriffs out if there's a robbery right. on 82nd street or something this side or the North side of Clackamas, but the individual is known to, you know, be down here in Eagle Creek area. Mm -hmm. Can you put out have that? You seen this have you seen this person? Yeah, they have it on their website. They have, can you ID me? Mm -hmm. They have a tip line mm -hmm. or, or um, like a tip hyperlink. And then they have a the non-emergency. So I was wondering if we could, in a post, do or have something on there, there like something. where the files are to, for the tip line. Because oh, in, yeah. instead of, instead of necessarily them calling you or you having to forward it to him mm -hmm. they just so go they right on there know. and it goes right there and because of you know people calling me and asking i go on there mm -hmm. and i submit the tips to the sheriff's department mm -hmm. and it gives you this is when you did it date time location so you have a record of it that you sent it to them mm -hmm. So we yeah, know that they there got was, it. Yeah, if the deputies are working on something, our Lieutenant Mendoza knows something that might be in town, but coming this way or something, and they want to post something, if that's all right with you, we could do that and include, if you know information about whatever the details are, please submit it to, then, and we could include that link. Could we also do it on the city website? Sure. Like the one that the ACE? Mm, yeah. ACE. Yeah, we could probably, probably do it on the city done. website and share it out, or one way or the other. We do it on okay. one and share it to the other. So that know. seemed to work. It I mean, there were work, like yeah. several hundred people that mm -hmm. commented on mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so okay to. Yeah. I'd be happy to help with the, the Facebook page. So oh, yeah. there we go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So maybe once a week. Um, yeah. Just, so it's active. Definitely. Starts getting activated. Um, and then, yeah, okay. And it could be, gosh, I don't know what, I don't know what it could be about. Well, I mean, first of all, I think we can like, I don't want to say an introduction, but we can say what we've done, mm -hmm. what are our goals are for the year. And this is what we're doing. Check out this on YouTube. Yeah. We have a, we have a committee Facebook page now mm -hmm. or on that. Yeah. Or just say, yeah, refer that, to this right, link. A link to it. Right. Yeah, because you can pin stuff to the top of a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You can pin things like that. So no matter what is posted, that is pinned to the top mm -hmm. with the Makes links sense. and stuff. The committee's been working hard, at, you know, as they were getting started over the past few months. Go here to see their goals and what they're working on, and we could link to that. So, but Mitch can figure it out. Or we have a, you know, what we did initially on Main mm -hmm. Street, mm -hmm. and then you can put an update. Mm -hmm. This is what we're done as of March 28th. Right, right. Or, Main Street. Right. City and, Council decided this X, Y, and Z, and then so mm -hmm. it's on there. Yeah. Doesn't there necessarily have to be on yeah. anywhere else? Right. So, and then like when, when Don gets those school zone safety sign, the crossing signs up, take a picture of them. Um, right. If you guys want to go stand by them, take a picture of them. We'll put it on the, or we'll just put the signs. Whatever you want to do. We're gonna put um, uh, carries on there. That one we have on the website <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, you know, just I'm sure Mitch has some good ideas too. But yeah, we don't want to like it's it might take me a day or two. Usually I can get it done that day, but um if it has to be done like right now, then try try to give me a little bit of heads up because sometimes I don't check my email all afternoon if I get stuck right. on something. 
Okay. Um, but yeah, just email me and I'll I'll post it on there um, best I can. If I get confused by it, I'll ask for help from Elena who does everything amazing there on there. <laughs> uh, we Ooh. all we all get frustrated, believe me, <laughs> on that stuff. All right. So I'm gonna note that Mitch will be the primary poster, awesome. uh, primary post maker or whatever you call it. Yeah. And, and then uh, if anybody else has ideas, feel free to email Mitch too. And he can oh, email. Mitch, okay. Yeah. I mean, just quickly, sorry, yeah, but the Neighborhood them. Watch, that flyer that you printed out for us for What's mm -hmm. Up Escada, mm -hmm. I think that should be on there. So people in the community oh, yeah. can say, oh, wow, we can actually take a class with Clackamas County Sheriffs and get a couple of signs after we do our okay. hour and a half, two hour training. That would get even more of the word out. It's a great idea. We put that on your on your website page too. And yes. Put that on there. Okay. And lastly, could you put, if the committee's okay with it, the traffic study on Shafford as a hyperlink? Because I noticed Happy Valley they put down oh, yeah, three twenty three yeah. two thousand three Shafford Southeast Shafford, and then they go to Oakview, and then they go to Clackamas Way. All the things that they've done. We can put that these are what people mm -hmm. have requested and this is what the results are and moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So I looked at something. their page today. I liked how it was laid out and how you could get information easily. And okay. they shared enough information, but it wasn't like overwhelmingly right. cluttered with stuff. It I was I like their website. But we'll have a new one this summer, maybe. Awesome. So everybody happy with that? Yeah. Even though Facebook's old, right, John? What? I know. <laughs> well, and I, I will say in that the data that I sent out to you, it does show that the high, you know, the highest percentage of people that use Facebook are kind of in that middle age category and female. And so, but they probably talk to each other and share that information. Well, I learned this and they share it. So I think it's still getting around, but oh, yeah. we do have to realize that we're not catching everybody on Facebook. Right. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. But start. it's people know that they can look there and, right. and get information. Awesome. All right. So preparation for presentation to council on April 24th. Is that the budget? Yes. What I just wanted you to be prepared um, for April 24th. All right. um, the Arts Commission, Parks and Rec, this committee, what else? There might be is another one. Um, anybody uh, that does events that needs a budget, okay. um, like the infrastructure committee, they don't they don't really do events or anything, so they don't need a budget. Budget committee doesn't need a budget; they just do a meeting. Or downtown Estacada. Down to yes, that's right, downtown Estacada. So the the groups that do events um, or outreach type things, they will be presenting. So you want to talk about your work plan. For the year, just kind of highlight these are these are the events that we're going to do, um, and this is my opinion. And we haven't really done this before in the past, so you guys can tweak it to how you want it to be. But in my opinion, I think they're going to want to hear this is our work plan. This is the budget we're requesting for that, and then they can ask questions or, um, you know, share any ideas they have. And will we get more than three minutes. You will get. You probably get about <laughs> ten minutes. I think. Just asking. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be a lot more questions than that. Uh, I think because we were going to try and get everybody through in an hour. So I think you'll have 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Um, yeah. And we, what do we, can't have more than three committee members there technically? Or is it no, okay? Or? I think if everybody wants to come, you're more than welcome. And okay. um, we'll just have one person present, okay. probably you as the chair, unless somebody else wants to volunteer or you want to delegate. Um, <laughs> Um, but everybody's welcome to come because you won't be deliberating towards any, you know, it wouldn't be a meeting as long okay. as you don't go stand around and talk Just about checking. business. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, and that's, uh, sorry. Uh, that April 24th, 7 o'clock. And then you'll have a meeting the next day, I guess, because usually yes. you, yeah. Yeah, you'll have the next, so you can follow up with what you learned. And that's at the 7 o'clock meeting? Or is it the one before? Do they have one before or no? Um, no, they that was. The, they're <clears throat> having the TSP. Yeah, the TSP update is at six from six to seven. Okay. That workshop. And so they'll do that from six to seven. And okay. then 
we'll have, we'll try to do the committee discussions close to the beginning of the meeting. So if okay. anybody can't stay the whole time, you know, you can sneak uh -huh. out the back. Well, and we've already kind of went through our work plan, right? So mm -hmm. absolutely. Jim knows it all. So mm -hmm. you might as well just perp. Doing the vice chair is doing a great job. <laughs> I'm important, man. <laughs> um, and then that, let's see. Yeah, that would be, that's pretty much all you would need to do at that, okay. at that meeting. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, everything's sent over to Sadie, mm -hmm. so yep. they'll have all that information. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, what's up event, May 15th? Yes, What's Up event is going to be on May 15th. It's going to be here in the evening again, 5.30 to 7. And if you don't have to come to every one of those, but if you'd like to, um, yes. It says 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. What? That's why I just had a question. Sorry. Yeah, that's a good question. What time is it? I thought uh, she said was, evening. I thought Taylor just said it was at 5.30 also. I thought so, too. I, I think I wrote it down. So I must... So that's probably just a typo on that page. Um, I have it at five five thirty. Yeah. On the, yeah. Yeah. So it's a, that's a typo. Sorry about that. But if you um, want to be at that, you're more than welcome. You don't definitely don't have to come to every one of those. Um, but the the purpose of that uh, filling out that form is so that you can talk about what are you who's going to be there, what are you going to present, do you need you know what are you going to talk about a specific event. Um, are you going to talk about any particular topic of school zone safety or neighborhood safety or, um, you know, whatever you want to be talking about at that event with folks that might come by your table? You can, this is just to help you prepare. And it's not due until, when is it due? I think it says on there. May 5th. But, May 5th. Yeah, May 5th. So if you want to even, <clears throat> you can talk about it tonight or if you want to put it on next time's agenda, talk about it then, you can do that too. So it gives you a little... So everyone okay Whatever talking next time? Yeah, I'm getting a little time to yeah to go over it. That's uh when's the next meeting? The 25th. Okay, thank you. Whew. All right. So thanks for bringing that up, Melanie. That's mm -hmm. uh what's up, Mr. Keda. All right, moving on to committee reports and comments. John. Um, I've got two topics, uh, but first for um Keith. I, uh, I read the line uh, and I, 30 years ago, um, I said the exact same thing to my wife about it's, you know, it's not fair to complain if I'm not willing to step up. So next thing you know, you know, I'm the den leader and a cub master and a soccer guy. And I don't know anything I didn't know anything about. So uh, um, well done and, and welcome aboard. Um, the two topics are, um, I mean, I, I understand that we are an advisory body, um, but I think the more that we know and understand, I think the better we can advise. Mm -hmm. And so last meeting, when we were talking about the cost of law enforcement, um, and we saw that the budget, the 22-23 budget uh, said $900,600. And then we saw that the 22-23 actual expenditure for law enforcement was uh, 181,548. Um, literally, I think the next day or the day after in the Estacada News, there was that um, interview with uh, Lieutenant Mendoza. Mm -hmm. And the quote was around 800,000. And so now I've got three numbers mm -hmm. and I would, I would like to know which one it is. In appropriate format, appropriate forum, but you know, three numbers, there's gotta be a number. And so I would be very interested in that. I could speak to that real quick. If you okay. Like. So that that um, lower number that you quoted, that's the you were reading um, like a quarter two financial report, I believe. And so that was what only what we had paid out so far this year. That's why that number is so low. That's the actual number that we had paid out so far at that point. Um, the actual contract that we have with the sheriff's office is uh, seven hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. Actually, seven forty seven six thirty three, um, and then there any overtime would go above that. Right. So when he said eight around eight hundred thousand, it's okay. It's it's not going to probably get to eight hundred thousand, but that was he was just rounding that off. Um, but then the school chips in 
um, 50 percent of the SRO. So not all of that is coming out of the city budget. Um, but then we have to add back in that we're requesting a new deputy for next fiscal year, and we have to pay for that, that deputy during their training time. So it's about $75,000 on top of the contract that we'll pay so that we're preparing for as soon as that a deputy comes out of training or is available either in September or March. Um, we're, I'm really pushing to get one here in September. So we'd have a, another deputy um, in a cicada, but that we have to pay, we pay half this year, about 75,000 and then half next year, fiscal year. So after right. July one, we'll pay the other half. And then as soon as they come on board, we'll start paying for them. So I need to figure out what the budget's gonna look like this year. We just budget uh, high so we don't run into a, a crunch. That's why the budget was looking at 950. I think we had 950. Okay, yeah. including this one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where all those those numbers were. Right. Down. I knew government budgets were <laughs> it's free to part, but, um and the last thing I wanted to bring up is um I think literally one of our first meetings, we had we were kind of talking and we were asking about city ordinances on um, like homelessness or something like that. So now I have some specific questions. Um, you know, do we have uh city ordinances? on public camping, on public drug use, um, public urination, um, public defecation, and on um, public panhandling. And um, has there been any consideration to not, the, the consequence of not having um, city ordinances on those particular things and uh, possible exposure to ADA noncompliance? If the sidewalk can't be used, is that, uh, um, cause potential exposure to, uh, to uh, ADA noncompliance. Um, and then kind of a corollary to that is if we do have those ordinances, uh, do we have the capability of enforcing them? Um, meaning a consequence for those ordinances. And I bring that up specifically because I did recently read um, there were some a couple of West Coast cities that had um, real homeless issues, and all they did, the only thing they did, was enforce their public ordination or their public um, ordinances. On I was to public urination. I was <laughs> um, all they did is they enforced like three ordinances, mm -hmm. and that was it. And they got rid of their homelessness because yeah. they moved on to someone else. So I would be very interested in either being directed to where I can look it up myself or finding out if we have anything like this um, on the books. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It is, no, it's okay. Um, so it's my understanding that the city of Gladstone has um, a city ordinance that states like there's no camping within the city limits of Gladstone. And that's how a lot of them are able to kind of curb their issue uh, with the homeless population because they're, you know, at that point in time, able to kind of encourage people to move on and, you know, move along and stuff. And I don't know if that's still in place. I know that's how it used to be there. Um, it might be something worth looking into or at least a direction to, to look at. Yeah, definitely. Now, I think we have something the city council did in regards to vehicles that were parked longer than a certain time. I I know for a fact we do have a camping ordinance because um, uh, that's been discussed before. Um, but I think it's illegal to have an ordinance against panhandling. I don't think you can do that. I could be wrong, but I think in the state of Oregon, you can't make it illegal to panhandle because the, um, the city of, one of the cities on the beach um, got in trouble for that recently. And they had to take all that stuff down because they had like a law against it or an ordinance against it. And it was against Do the law. Do we have panhandling here in Estacada? I mean, is there a location that that's an issue? Not that I've seen. Just being strategic. Person. Yeah. But I do know, I mean, we it would be nice to find those ordinances and actually maybe recommend to the city council that we encourage the police department to enforce those ordinances. So I, it's a great idea. If we do some research, can we send it to you? And we can either, I guess, present a recommendation or send something to the city council? Sure. You Is can that make, okay? Yeah, Things yeah, that yeah. are the gaps that we have or... Just looking oh, ahead. Also, there is recently, I think 
I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was um, a year and a half ago or so, the city council made it illegal to be nude, pub public nudity illegal, or yeah. did an ordinance or whatever they do. Two years ago, right? It was two years ago yeah. and they made an ordinance about that. So public nudity is illegal in Estacada. So that might cover some of that stuff too, like defecation and urination. I mean, they'd have to be kind of partially nude to do that. So to enforce that would help too. I can look at um, and send you links to our ordinances. However, with the changes in state laws recently, um, I think the council will be working to address um, some different rules for our, our houseless population because um, it has to pretty much come back down to health and safety. And so there are some definite things that we can do and enforce re and with regard to that. Um, but there, it's a little different than I think right now it's like you can't set up a camp. You can't, that means to um, have a fire or cook. There, there's like a list. I can't remember what it all is, but I'll send you a link to that. You can see what it is now. Um, but I know that um, before July, we will be working on um, making sure that our ordinances are enforceable, but that they meet the state law as well. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My comments kind of go in with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a little, uh, I got a phone call this morning, a frantic phone call this morning um, from Richard at Keelan's Dogs. And he um, didn't know what to do because he reached out to me because we've kind of been there to listen to them about what's going on over there. Um, and I don't know if you guys are familiar, but if you're in that parking lot where Keelan's Dogs is and the other food carts, because that's kind of like our main food cart area, there's a back door to Justin video right there. And that back door kind of has like, it's like a little tiny alcove. So there's a little bit of like indent to get into the door. So there's like, it's kind of like a shelterish type location where you could hide from the rain and stuff. Well, he came in this morning to open up shop and um, he, uh, there was a homeless man sleeping there um, and he didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He went, he's, you know, they've experienced some major backlash from saying anything. So they kind of keep to themselves right now, which I think is really disheartening to hear. Um, and so he um, just went in to start prep and start prepping for the day and locked himself in. And then he looked out the window and this guy was starting a fire, a fire right there where he could set the whole building on fire. So he's like, okay, I got to say something. So he goes up to the guy and he says, Hey man, you can't, you can't do that here. You're going to light the whole building on fire. And that's so dangerous. And he said, well, I'm cold. So that's, that's, I'm going to do it. I'm cold. And that's what I'm going to do. And he goes, you got, we got to find another way because you're going to set this whole building on fire. That's a huge, huge problem. Please don't light a fire here. He lit the fire anyways. Um, and I would encourage us to maybe, I didn't get a chance because of my mobility is really bad. So I didn't get a chance to go get a picture, but he said there's burn marks on the, the where the door is. And um, so he, they got into a back and forth. This guy was screaming at him. So he says, you know what, forget it. I'm going to go. He went to the fire department. He asked them, can we do something? Um, he pressed a little button and over the phone, they said, you have to call it into 911 for us to be dispatched to a fire, which I know is a legal way to do things. Um, so this person decided to, Richard decided to go back and put out the fire himself um, because they said that they couldn't be dispatched unless a call was made. I encouraged him, you know, we need to make these calls because um, it, even if something isn't done, the record needs to be there. We need records of these things. Um, so he went back and as he's coming back, he sees the guy was already leaving and the guy was leaving and he threatened him. He basically said, you made a big mistake approaching me. I have, you know, um, and he kind of left it dangling there. Like he was going to do something to this poor business owner in our town. Um, and, uh, it was just disheartening to hear that happen. Um, I'm aware that the fire department has restrictions that they need to stand by, but also, I would encourage, I know he felt that if he had called 911 and went through the whole process, it would have been too late. He needed someone right then and there. He needed to put out that fire. And so he wanted some backup because he's, he's worried. These people are threatening. They've been threatened by them before. They've been threatened by others because of the situation, because they're willing to speak out about what's going on. Um, and I just think it's really disheartening to hear that um, a really 
valuable business owner in our area is afraid to be alone now. They're afraid to be at their business. They're being threatened for trying to protect the rest of the town. Um, and that was an issue that happened this morning. And I just wanted to let everybody know that that was going on. Um, I'm not sure what we can do except encourage people to continue to report things. Um, but also we've got to, we've got to figure out why there's such an influx that's just recently come in and figure out how to stop that. Um, also, thank you guys for being here and, um, you know, good meeting. So, uh, same, same situation occurred last night outside of Old Mill with more, more than likely that same individual. Probably. Um, you know, they just got done doing their new patio expansion off the, and they have an outdoor fireplace now and all of that. It's a really nice, really nice atmosphere there now. But I was in there last night having dinner. Um, um, one of the bartenders said that, hey, there's this guy all dressed in black. He was, he like started a fire outside. And so I went out there and kind of saw what he was doing. I'm like, he had like a little pile of stuff that he had lit on fire just outside of like the new fire pit. Like, and I was like, you know, you could have, if you wanted to burn something, you could have put it inside the, you know, the fire pit. He's like, oh no, that guy over there told me to, you know, told me to start this here. And I'm, there's some guy out there, he's just, you know, kind of shaking his head, but, you know, eventually like he put it out and stuff after he asked him to put it out and he ended up moving along, but, you know, it's kind of, he didn't make it that far clearly it sounds like yeah it sounds like he was a little bit more volatile today than right what he was last night because he wasn't wasn't really an issue he didn't talk back or you know anything like that so man well how the guy this morning that you dealt with reported it since it did you said there were singe marks on the door then they probably could have charged him with arson Right. Because it didn't get a structure and the structure is occupied. So that raises the level of yep. the felony up. And I'm going to encourage report him to yeah. continue. Now, your deal being outdoors by a fire pit, probably not the arson part, but definitely when it gets to a building and we're talking about property or life destruction, right. then that's a whole nother level. So they should have, he should have called 911 for the fire department because they have a fire marshal. I agree. Come out and do his job. And they'll investigate the arson recommend to the district attorney and all that stuff. I'm going to so. still encourage him hopefully now that the guy isn't actually physically there to yeah. still report it because yeah, he needs to make a report. it needs to be it, report like I told him we really need to report these things but also yeah. like we've got to find a way to make these guys feel safer it's just not right and every time they speak up then they're they're met with backlash for speaking mm -hmm. up by other businesses and it's just really unfortunate yeah, it is Yeah, this is this is what I think the 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 heart of why we're here. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a forum for the community to talk about things that that weren't well known because there seems to be a significant number of unreported crimes. Right. Uh, they have a safe forum to come and report that, and next thing you know, they're being bullied mm -hmm. um, because that's what it is. It's bullied, mm -hmm. and I have noted with interest uh, some of the comments. Uh, that we've received based on some of the conversations we've had in this committee. And um, it speaks to the need for additional law enforcement. If we don't have the, at whatever time it was, uh, if we don't have someone uh, available um, quickly for something like that, you know, we are uh, live in a community that's gone through um, fires. And so, you know, I don't think we're being overly sensitive. I think, as a matter of fact, I just read an article that the number of fires in March was some kind of very high. Yeah, exactly right. So no, that's it's no joking matter. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, uh, this is the forum for citizens to to talk about that kind of stuff. And if there's others in our community that feel the need to bully others then then bring it come on in and yeah. and let's talk about it um let's let's uh give them the forum to uh defend themselves in public and if not then let's find let the let the people that are being bullied um if they're they're okay let us know yeah um, that's uh never mind um yeah i agree with you 
No, that's good. Anyone else have anything? All right, my turn here. All right, no, I'm just kidding. I just wanted to know, um, maybe we can do it the next meeting, but Melanie gave me an idea on not only uh, doing a letter to school district or uh, superintendent Carpenter, but I would like to see this committee uh, moving forward and reaching out to ODOT in Clackamas County and putting it on record that we're concerned about Hypel and 224 due to the crash statistics that we've seen, not only from the staff, but the information that the staff has provided us and, and all the traffic studies of all these new developments mm -hmm. and the jackpot intersection at 211 and 224, which I think myself and just about everyone in this room has experienced in the last, you know, this winter time and Amsiger in 224. So maybe we could do something like that. And to finish, I want everyone to know that on April 13th at 7 p.m., the Eagle Creek Barton CPO will be meeting at Grace Crossing Bible Church, which used to be First Baptist there on Eagle Creek. And they will have Clackamas County transportation with plans for Highway 224, Amsiger intersection, along with Eagle Creek slash Deuce Road intersection. Deuce Road is in our yeah. our our wheelhouse. Yeah. That's that's us. All right. Possible Clackamas fire update. And they're also going to speak um, about the new sewer plan in the rural area of Folsom and Samuels Road. So I just wanted to put that out. Awesome. So everybody knows about that. 13th. That is April 13th, 7 p.m. at uh, Grace Crossing Bible Church, formerly First Baptist, on Eagle Creek Road. So like it looks like they have a lot of going on, cool. which everything we're talking about here. So just want to everyone know that. Awesome. So does anyone else have anything else? Good meeting. All right. Um, awesome meeting. Out of curiosity, our new guy, he's a uh, two or four year term. That's when the council will. Good question. I thought it was two years, but let me look. I think Katie was two. I, it's on the website. I think it's three. There's three that are four, right? No, it's either two or three. Like I'm a two year term. It's two. Okay. Two and three. Two and three. Okay. I thought it was two and four. That's what I, I thought it was three and four. <laughs> well, there's they're all it's two yeah. two year to four year. It's I staggered. Think it's, I think it's staggered two years and three years. Three years. Yeah, yeah. I think it's two and three. actually I think it's all two years. I think the very first time we like Half of you were appointed for three years so that it starts oh. to stagger and then it's a two year. Oh, okay. Um, and Katie would be with you, right? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Seven members. Um, initially, four of you serve a three year term, three serve a two, and then act that, and then from there on out, it's a two year ter term each time. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Excellent. Well, I want to appreciate, I appreciate everyone showing up and thank you. Mitch for taking on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I uh, don't have to help have my granddaughter help me with that. So <laughs> I appreciate that. And thank you for visitors and Keith, thank you for coming and volunteering and uh, all this during this meeting, Travel Public Safety. Thank you.